Hello and welcome past participants. Uh, welcome to our next presentation entitled First Move Well, Then Move Often. This is tips for maintaining a healthy spine while learning from home. I'm your host for this segment, Amir Smiley. A little bit about me, I am a physical therapist working here at Doctors Hospital at Renaissance. Uh, I've been with DHR Health now for nine years. Uh, I'm an orthopedic specialist uh, as well as a manual therapy specialist and I currently serve as a, a mentor for those uh, doing fellowship training in orthopedic manual physical therapy. Quick disclaimer on this presentation, uh, this was created for informational purposes only. The content is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Always seek the advice of your physician or other qualified healthcare provider if you have any questions regarding a medical condition. To start off with, it's important that we uh, understand the distinction between body mechanics and ergonomics. These are our two big topics for today. Uh, body mechanics is really just how we use our bodies in various positions. Ergonomics really is its own field of study uh, that seeks to create a, a healthier work environment or driving environment or home environment to decrease stress on the body when we have to do movements. Movement itself really consists of four basic parts and this is what we need to know when we're looking at optimizing movement. So these components are body alignment, which we often call posture, joint mobility, balance, and coordinated movement. On our next slide here, we're gonna look at the structure and function of the spine. In order to figure out how we should optimize posture, we first need to understand uh, what makes up the spine, what, what uh, comprises our posture. So the structure of the spine integrates several types of tissues, so bone, muscle, ligament, joint, and nerves. These are our, uh, our predominant uh, tissues that we're gonna be talking about. So the function of the spine is really to transfer loads from the upper extremities, your arms, and from your lower extremities, your legs, into the spine. I mean, that's really what you're trying to do. That's your, your spine is essentially your foundation for movement. On this slide, uh, we have a nice illustration here of various types of postures. So we're all built a little bit differently. Uh, we all have different body types. Uh, there are some commonalities between body types and, uh, and postures, but uh, there is an ideal posture. There's an optimal posture that can be observed and trained. Um, optimal posture really maintains the resting length of each muscle group at the point where it can produce the most force to remain upright. So optimal posture really prepares us to safely move, to safely transfer loads from the spine, uh, to, uh, from our arms and our legs. We'll start off here in this slide with uh, just a basic overview of the different types of positions that we think of when we, when we think about ergonomics or body mechanics. So our, our sitting posture and our standing posture. So these are two nice little diagrams here. Uh, the standing posture, uh, you'll see each of these has an X over the suboptimal posture. And uh, the larger picture just next to the larger illustration will show you uh, a posture that is much more optimal and uh, safer and less likely to cause repetitive stress injury. Uh, so you'll notice that in the standing posture, that little dotted line that's there, that's our plumb line, that goes through uh, the individual's ear, their shoulder, their hip, their knee, and just uh, ahead of their ankle. So that, that alignment uh, there is going to produce uh, a much more efficient type of movement and it's also going to support the structures in a way that doesn't stress them, uh, meaning less stress on your low back, less stress on your neck. Uh, even more importantly, sitting posture. So for those of you who are uh, at home, learning from home at the moment, uh, sitting posture is gonna be extremely important because if you're sitting for uh, you know, many, many hours throughout the day, uh, it's important that uh, you observe a positioning that will reduce stress on the body. So in this case, it's much the same as what we saw in standing. Uh, this individual is, is sitting in a way where her ear, shoulder, and hip all line up very well. You'll notice that her uh, knees and her hips are both at a 90 degree angle with her feet flat on the floor. So this is a nice supported position uh, that's gonna help you to be able to maintain what we call a neutral position of the spine. In this position, you're not having to extend as much energy 
uh, to maintain this. You'll notice also that this individual has a little rolled up towel behind her low back. That's something that can also help to reduce energy expenditure, but also maintain your spine in a nice, healthy, neutral position. In this next slide, we will break down uh, sitting posture from the standpoint of what's going on at the pelvis, and then also in the next slide, what's going on at the shoulder and the neck. So you've heard the phrase, too much of anything is bad. Uh, and it's the same case uh, when we're talking about posture. So there is such a thing as poor posture. Uh, oftentimes we think of somebody slouching, uh, but there's also what we call overcorrected posture. So somebody who's making too much of an effort to sit up straight, that can also cause issues. So uh, in this particular uh, illustration, we see uh, letter A and letter B. These are both extremes of, of postural positioning. So something in the middle between these two positions is where we're going to accomplish a neutral spine position. In the next slide, you see protraction and retraction of the cervical spine. So this is your neck region. Uh, in this, uh, we, sh we see exactly the same uh, issue. So these are two extremes. One where the individual's head is jutted way forward, ahead of their shoulders. You see the, the, the ear no longer lines up with the shoulder. Um, and in the second uh, picture over on the right, you see that that ear is now behind the shoulder. So again, neither of these represents an optimal position. These are both extremes of suboptimal positions. So if we go to put that back together, you'll see that this individual is now sitting at their table. They're looking at their tablet. Um, they've got that support from their feet. Uh, they're positioned well at the hips and knees. They've got a nice little roll behind their low back and their alignment is well observed. Uh, many times when we're doing distance learning, uh, we are using tablets and other handheld devices that can easily be uh, used while sitting on a couch or a recliner or on the floor. Uh, oftentimes when patients come to see us for physical therapy and they have back pain or neck pain, uh, I often ask them, where do you like to sit at home? What do you, where do you find yourself spending the most amount of time uh, when you're doing either your work or your reading or, or any other type of leisure activities that involve staying in one place for a long period of time? And I ask my patients to show me how it is that they sit. Many times uh, what we'll see is that this picture here with the, uh, the little pink X over it, that's what they show me. And that's a, that's a very, very stressful position on multiple structures. Uh, everything ranging from the shoulder to the neck and then also the low back and the hip musculature. So not the best, not the best thing to do uh, when we're doing distance learning. Uh, we need to make sure that we observe positioning that's going to put you in a state where you can focus on what you're doing and reduce stress on the body. Another nice illustration here of computer work. Uh, you'll see these illustrations might be a little bit outdated. We don't really use computers that big anymore. Uh, but you'll see the difference between these two individuals. So one of them on the left, uh, he's got a less than optimal setup. Uh, the way that he's positioned relative to his computer, he's sort of at an angle. He's having to turn his upper body to look towards it. His keyboard is, is quite high relative to where his uh, elbows rest. And just in general, his orientation to his monitor is not what we'd like to see. Over on the right, you see this individual has oriented their chair, the height of it, to match up to the computer. So the top of the monitor is roughly at eye level with the individual. Uh, the keyboard is set lower so that the elbows can be resting at a nice 90 degree angle. Uh, that helps the wrists to be in a better position. And you'll also see what we talked about before. This individual has their feet on the floor. They're in a nice supported position. They're scooted all the way back on the chair so that their back is well supported. Uh, and this is going to allow this person to be in this position for a much longer period of time without experiencing the same amount of stress as this individual over on the left side. So let's put that all back together. And we're talking about sitting positioning because this is going to be a very, very important thing as we continue on, uh, you know, in, in the response to recent changes. Uh, we're using distance learning as a big part of our, uh, our platform uh, in school and in work. Uh, so it's important that, that you observe good sitting posture. So again, over on the left here, uh, example A, that is going to be your example of less than optimal posture. Um, this individual is sitting in a way where their head is way forward. 
So the example that I like to give when I'm explaining this to my patients is, uh, let's say I have uh, a bottle of water and I, I hold that bottle of water way out in front of me. And I think about how long could I possibly hold that there for? Uh, at a certain point, my muscles are gonna start getting tired of my shoulder. I might be able to be there for 20 minutes, but after that, these muscles are gonna start tiring out and I'm gonna have to put it down. That's a lot of uh, energy to expend to hold it way out here. Now, if I kept that same bottle of water close, I could hold it for hours. This is the case with this individual in example A. What we see is that this person's head is being held way out away from their body. And so their muscles are having to work exponentially harder to support them. Oftentimes we think that maintaining uh, an upright posture, good posture, is a lot of work. And realistically, when we take the measure of examining our positioning, optimizing our posture, like what you see in example B here, you're actually expending much less energy than the individual in example A who is not observing optimal posture. So uh, I hope you found that informative. I think uh, these are things that really you can change immediately. Uh, you can observe your environment where you're doing your distance learning uh, and you can make uh, substantive changes that are gonna help to reduce the stress on your low back and help you to maintain an active, healthy, healthy lifestyle. Just a brief recap, we provided a basic understanding of normal anatomy of the spine. Uh, we also defined and identified principles of good body mechanics and ergonomics. And we described some practical modifications that you can use to achieve good body mechanics while learning from home. I wanna thank you for your time today. Thank you for letting me join you uh, as part of this PATHS conference. Uh, stay safe out there and uh, we wish you the best.